Hey, what's up guys, it's Jonathan here. So a lot of times you hear people say they should save money and they should keep money in savings. Even though it is good to save money and to live below your means, there are some significant downsides to this consistently saving money. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss three downsides of, this con of consistently just saving money. And if you stay till the very end, I'll actually discuss what you should do instead of just saving your money. So let's get right into the video. But before we do, I ask this one favor of you. Can you please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm? It greatly helps out the channel and helps get this video pushed to as many people as possible because the YouTube algorithm likes to push videos that get a lot of likes. So let's get right into the video. So when you go and deposit your money into a bank, the bank will take your money and go and borrow it to people who need it. And when the bank does this, they charge an interest rate. And what the bank will do is that the interest that they take in, they'll also pay a certain portion of that interest as well back to the person who deposited money into their bank account. This is why savings accounts usually pay you out interest. So almost a year ago, the Federal Reserve slashed the federal funds rate down to almost zero. And pretty much the reason why they did this was to try to stimulate the economy due to the pandemic. And by slashing the federal funds rate down to zero, that also made banks have to lower the amount of interest that they could ask for um, the different loan products. Because of this, the interest rates that you earn on savings account have been has gone down significantly within the past year. And over the past 10 years, as we've been recovering from the Great Recession, we've noticed that interest rates have been some of the lowest they've been in history which is good if you're somebody taking out debt, but is very bad if you're somebody who has deposits in a bank account. And the average interest rate on a savings account right now is about 0.21%, which is a lot less than what inflation is typically, which is usually about two to 3% every year. The money that you deposit into a bank account is losing value at a very rapid pace. The interest that the bank is paying you on that deposit isn't enough to compensate the amount of value you're losing from that money every year. And with the Fed's current position on keeping interest rates low until all sectors of the economy reach full employment, it's going to be quite a while until we see any significant bumps in interest rates. So reason number one why you should stop saving money is because of the low interest rates on savings accounts. The second downside of saving is the taxation that you have to pay on the interest you earn in savings accounts. So on top of the low interest rates that you're already getting, to add insult to injury, you now have to pay taxes on that interest that you actually earned. So let's just say you have $1,000 in a savings account and you're getting paid 2% interest. So that means that every year you're getting about $20 worth of interest. But then let's say that you're inside a 30% tax bracket. That means that instead of you actually taking home the $20, in reality, you would only be taking home about $14, which means you're actually getting a 1.4% return instead of a 2% return. And with inflation at about 2-3% to a year, that means that you're almost always going to be in the negative no matter how high of an interest rate you get paid. And generally speaking, when the federal funds rate goes up, usually inflation tends to come up as well. So you're never really, so you're kind of always playing this game where you're always behind. The third reason why I think it's important that you stop saving money is the psychology behind saving. And this one's a little trickier, so stay with me here. Some psychology problems when you have a lot of money sitting in a savings account. And one of the problems is, is that it's very easy for you to go into a savings account and just go and pull money out and not really feel any pain necessarily of doing so. So let's say you wanna take a thousand dollar vacation and you don't have a thousand dollars saved to take this vacation, but you have an emergency fund that has, uh, that has a couple thousand dollars in it. Well, you may be very tempted to go and withdraw the money from that savings account to go and pay for the vacation. And when you do that, you're not going to feel any pain of spending that money. That could be very problematic because it's human nature to always want more. So you can find yourself in a very slippery slope using a savings account to store a lot of money in. The second psychological problem with saving money in a savings account is the fact that it could be very demotivating. So let's say you're a self-employed individual or let's just say that you are an employee who had just recently lost their job. 
When you have a lot of money in savings, you can be very motivated to stop working and just to withdraw money from that account to pay for your bills. Whereas if you don't have that money so accessible to you, it'll actually drive you to work more so you can pay so you can work to pay your bills instead of just using the money in your savings account. So now you may be thinking, okay, so if savings is so terrible, what should I do instead? Here's the thing. In my opinion, the best place to keep liquid cash is in stocks. And here's the reason why. Because when you have money in stocks, you're less likely to liquidate stocks to go and make purchases that you don't really need. And by doing that, what that will actually do, will actually motivate you to work more to pay for the stuff that you want instead of just using the money that you've saved up. And that's a good thing because then you can now let that money work for you and let it dev- and let it build wealth. Whereas if you just use- pull that money out and went and bought like a big screen TV with it, that big screen TV is just going to lose value over time and it's not building you wealth. That money is not working for you. You're working for it. And that's one of the biggest keys to building wealth is making sure that your money is working for you. You work hard for your money, so you need to make sure your money works hard for you because as a human being, you can only work so much. It's very important that you get your money to work hard for you So then you can actually enjoy your life and do the things that you want to do. Also, when you have money invested, you get higher yields and those higher yields and actually let you keep up and even beat inflation. So your money is just not getting devalued every single year. The great thing about stocks is that with stocks, anytime you have a gain, you don't have to pay taxes on that gain until you sell. So let's say you bought a stock for $100 and it went up to $400 per share. Well, that $300 of tax liability that you have, you don't realize it until you actually sell the share. So let's say it takes you five years for that stock to go from 100 to $400. In those five years, it's not like every single year that stock goes up, you have to pay taxes. You just pay taxes at one fellow swoop, which is actually a lot better because it gives your money more opportunity to grow. So there you have it. Those are the three main reasons why savings accounts are not the move to make in 2021 and that you should really focus on making your money work for you by investing it and not just keeping it in a savings account. So I'd like thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. It greatly helps the channel out and it helps push this video to as many people as possible. If you enjoy my perspective or the way I explain things, I encourage you to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video. I know that this topic can be very controversial in the personal finance space, so if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I would like to hear from you guys what you guys think about this about this um, argument between saving and investing. Also, follow me on all the social medias. I try to post there every day. And thank you for watching. Until next time. Oh,